Hi and welcome to the second log in this uh, project Phono Collab at Ausnit E. Um, today I would like to bring up a problem and I honestly don't have the answer. Now I have uh, shown yesterday in the first log how I worked with Phono Collab and how to make sure that two players um, that we can translate their proximity into the respective loudness of the voices of these two players. Now I also wanted to, to make sure that when a player stands still there is no sound. And I thought that this functionality was easy to find out. I know the answer to that already. But I thought also that a third step would be that the speed of each uh, player is translated into the uh, sample rate of the, of the player's sound. Now, uh, sample rate works in a similar way to uh, if you take an old record player. Now you play it slower and the tone will go down or you stop playing it, it the sound will stop. So if sample rate is, is, is uh, half what it usually is, then the, the sound will drop an octave and so on. And if sample rate is zero, the result is zero. Now I want to show you the problem a little here. So what comes into the computer is a stream of x, y um, um, values. Uh, this is a person moving around in space and at the same time the same person or another person is following the movements on this x, y path on a smartphone or an iPad, whatever. So the computer gets these numbers, always pairs of X and Y. Now, if I wanted to, t to find out what's the velocity of this point on a line, I would pretty sure be able to come up with an answer quite rapidly, I think, according to my own knowledge, which is very slim about these things. And whether it be a a vertical or horizontal line, I would easily find the answer. But what happens when it's di diagonal? Because you have a pair of x, y values and they grow, but they grow two at the same time. So this one, one value grows and the other one is still. So it's easy to find out which, which is the velocity. So that's the problem. And I honestly really, really don't have any answer to it. Uh, the reason why I, sp I spend your valuable time on this is also because I wanted to show what kind of, um, it's, it's an educational method to bring up a problem without knowing the answer. So if I, if I was a teacher for a class, I would say, this is a problem, please help me find the answer. I don't have the answer. So let's find out how to get the answer, right? This is real problem solving and it includes maths. So actually this is an art project in learning, but it actually really includes math. You need to find this answer, otherwise I can't translate the speed of the movement of people around in the room into the speed of the sound. So, I'll try and fix it out, find out, uh, and uh, my first clue would be to, 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 to check on the internet, to Google. So, x, y, uh, velocity, something like that. I'll see. But for now, I don't have an answer. Let's see what happens. Okay, just for an update, now one, uh, one hour later, I've been googling and that was actually the right way to start, I found out, so check this out. So I found this formula and I found out that it has to do with vectors. Um, so what is happening is that you have two pairs of x and y. Um, first pair is here, this would be 0 plus 0. And the second pair, for example, could be over here, which is still zero, but then maximum here, right, 127. So this distance is in interesting to measure. But what happens if I do like that and I go like here, right? That's the question. So according to this formula, what I do is I take the second uh, pair of um, x, y's and I deduce the first pair from it and take this, this, the, uh, the power of two of them and then I take the square root. This is the formula. I found the formula. 
I tested it out, it seems to work. Now I put this, uh, I link the iPad to the this one and then I go like this. And then you can see this number, it changes. Uh, it stays like one, but you can see it, it's a new number each time, right? Because this one gives a bang. So, um, and you can see if I go from this place to that place rapidly, it's like more or less the same, um, the same uh, number, right? Anyway, it seems to work. Now the next thing is how to measure it over time. Now we have the distance not regarding the um, whether it is a linear or a 2D uh, movement, right? So that's the first step. Next step, how about time? This is what I'm doing now and I'll be back. There comes a time when you have to say stop and this is the time. So how far have I come? Now as it is very very obvious to see I have reached a moment where I'm able to control sound and, and link sound with velocity of movement somehow. Uh, now you can see I'm moving the dot on the iPad and I've succeeded in linking movement with sound, uh, with sample rate. Now what happens is that when it stands still the sound stops, right? And when moving in a steady movement it sound, the sound will keep a certain level. Now I've been using a sine wave which is like in order to check whether the sound uh, if it were a whatever other sound well the sine wave will show us uh, if it sounds okay right okay so now the problem is there is this sound very very high pitched I don't know if you hear it on the recording it keeps being there and it doesn't stop uh, that's one thing and then it's like when I move, it's like either it's totally uh, high or it's zero. So there is a there is not a very very sharp link between uh, the um, velocity and the, the the tone, right? So that's another problem. Uh, I have to find out how to to do that. So well, that's that's what I had. What, what I got time to finish today and uh, tomorrow will probably f continue in something similar or well some other time I'll take it up. But um, now I hope I have, I hope I will reach, uh, reach uh, the, the result that I'm looking for and uh, anyone who can help that would be awesome. Thank you for today.